Hey, Alyssa. Hey, Todd. Hey, Todd. Bows. Oh, I wasn't sure if anyone would notice it or not, but I guess he totally noticed. You're wearing sandals at work. Well, when I woke up this morning, I couldn't find my other pair of shoes, so I put these on. I have 87 pairs of shoes, and you only have two, and one of them is sandals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like them. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Mike, and this is how we went into lockdown to stay pure. So no matter what the issue is, no matter how big, we will find an answer. I know you will. You always do. So I checked out this book. Guys, guys. He's usually not this excited, so it must be good. Get this. The county fair is in town. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but Arrow Harris is performing in the center stage. Who is Arrow Harris? Just the biggest thing in country music since the Eastland Brothers. <laughs> I don't really follow country music. Well, you should, because Arrow Harris is... Claire, I'm so sorry. I didn't stop to say hello. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> Enough of the pleasantries. This is not a drill. We are on full lockdown. Lockdown? Uh, yeah, Mike, what's going on? Alyssa, we have a code corn dog. I repeat, the county fair is in town. The county fair! Is this normal? Well, I thought he'd be more excited because the county fair only comes once a year. He would have been. But this all started on a normal day at the county fair two years ago. Unfortunately, your friend here is not allowed back at the fair. What exactly did he do? Mike, what did you do? I don't want to talk about it. He got his head stuck in a cotton candy machine. I don't know what is so tempting about covering your head with pink candy floss, but it seems like it happens every year. Your temptation got the best of you, friend. Well, thanks for all your help. I promise I'll make sure that he stays here. Well, I've got to get back. I've got a cotton candy machine that needs cleaning. You know what they say. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the fairgrounds. Melissa, well, I know I messed up, but I really wanted to put my head in the cotton candy machine. I just wanted to know what would happen. Now I know, you get kicked out of the fair. If it was so tempting, why didn't you just leave? Because the cotton candy machines were calling to me. They were like, Mike, wouldn't it be hilarious and delicious if you had cotton candy on your head? Temptation can be hard, but you don't have to give in to it. You can always say no. And she was right. I could have said no, so I will. Just like I did last year, I will say no to the county fair. And it probably will help if we say this verse. It's from the book of 1 Corinthians. Say it with me, like this. 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13. 10, 10, 10, but when you are tempted. But, but when, when you, you are, are tempted, tempted. God will give you a way out. God, God will give you a way out. So that you can. Stand up under it. So, so that, that you can stand up under it. God will always give you a way out to say no to temptation, so we don't sin. Code corn dog? Yep, I activated full lockdown. Good. Claire, do you have fair problems too? Actually, I'm here for something else. Guys, just because he was tempted by the fair doesn't mean I will be. Listen to me, man. Don't go to that fair. You think you can handle it, but you can't. But Arrow Harris is performing. Oh, what boys want to see Arrow Harris right. live? Alyssa, yeah. we're on lockdown. Right. Then go if you must. But remember, stay pure. Say no to sin. Stay pure. Say no to sin. Got it. I'll be fine. Poor soul. He has no idea what he's walking into. As long as he stays away from the cotton candy. Oh, it's not just the food. What do you mean? It was a normal day last year at the county fair.
You look mighty familiar to me. Do I know you? No. Hmm. Well, I guess you're right. I think I'd remember a sweet stash like that one. Mike, if you're not gonna tell it right, let me tell it. What do you mean? You've never had a mustache like that. I have a mustache in several of my flashbacks. Let me tell it. Mm -hmm. It was a normal day, last year at the county fair. Hey, I recognize you, you're Cotton Candy Head. Yep, that's me. Well, aren't you two a couple of peas in the pod? Well, I thought your pink hair stunt was mighty wild, but this one here is in a whole mess of trouble. She tried to release the pony and ride off into the sunset. Well, I'm sure she's sorry and she'll never do it again. Oh, she's not coming back to the fair. Now I've got to get back to those ponies and make sure that they weren't too spooked by the ruckus. Thank you for your diligence. Well, you know what they say. Give them an inch and they'll take the pony out of the fair. I have literally never heard anyone say that. You still a pony? I knew it was wrong, but there's, there's just, just something, something about, about the, the county, county fair. fair. I knew if I ever got on one of those ponies, I wouldn't want to get off. I could have walked away, but I didn't. That's not how I remember it. How do you remember it? I had a big bushy mustache. If temptation is a sin, then I should probably take this book back to the library. Actually, temptation's not a sin, but before we get into that, what is the story with that book? My parents told me I'm not allowed to read this book, but everyone I know is reading it. So I went behind their back and checked it out at the library. Oh, I see. I was going to go to the park and read it, but instead, I came here. I wasn't so sure what I should do. So you know you're not supposed to read it, but you're carrying it around with you. That's an unbelievable amount of temptation. It really is. It sounds like you should get rid of that book if it's a temptation for you, but like I said earlier, temptation's not actually a sin. It's not? Nope, even Jesus was tempted. Now, he didn't seek out temptation. It's not like he towed the line to see how close he could get without sinning, but he was tempted. Here, it's in this Bible story. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. is alive. Matthew. God's Spirit led Jesus into the desert. He had nothing to eat for 40 days and nights. After that, Jesus was very hungry. Knowing that Jesus was hungry, the devil tempted him. He pointed to a rock and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these rocks to become bread. Jesus answered the devil using God's words from the Bible. It's not just bread that keeps people alive, he said. Their lives also depend on what God says. Next, the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple. If you are the Son of God, jump off. The scriptures say that God's angels will rescue you. So Jesus used God's word to give his second answer. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, he said, quoting again from the Bible. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a mountain and showed him all the world's kingdoms and wealth. This can be yours, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Go away, Satan, Jesus commanded. Then he quoted God's word one more time. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. As soon as Jesus said it, the devil left him. Then angels came and cared for him. Jesus had faced temptation and hadn't sinned, not even once. So it's not a sin to be tempted. Yep, Jesus was tempted, so he knows what it's like when we are tempted. You know, he said no to temptation. 
He never sinned. I guess he knew what the Bible said. Whenever he was tempted, he could use it to help him say no. That's right. Oh boy. Hey guys. Back so soon? Here we go again. Oh, Cotton no. candy head. Getaway pony. Ma'am. Now your friend here is not allowed back at the fairground. What happened? Well, I remembered what you said. Stay pure, say no to sin. And then I saw Arrow Harris's tour bus. Yep, he climbed in through the window of the tour bus and got stuck. Took four of us to get him out. Mr. Harris was mighty rattled. I was just so excited to see him that I saw the open window, so I took a chance. And my uh, belt buckle got stuck. I don't know what it is about y'all in the fair. Cotton candy, ponies, tour buses. It seems like I have to come back here every year. Don't worry about us. We are all in full lockdown. Yeah, you won't have any more problems with us. I'm really sorry about the incident. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, you know what they say. When you're paying bananas, you get monkeys. What? She called you a monkey. Did she called me a monkey? Yeah. Now I get why we go into lockdown. That was actually Alyssa's idea. After the pony incident, we decided to make some rules about the fair. It all started when we were making rules about the fair. That fair is gonna come every year and bring those ponies. And the cotton candy machines. What do we do? Uh, we need a plan to say no to sin. Oh, we'll call it Code Corn Dog. That's perfect. Okay, now we just need some ways to say no to temptation before we go too far. We can hold each other accountable. Yes, accountability is important. It's just where, as a friend, I ask you to help me say no and stay here. Another way to stay out of temptation is to say a Bible verse when you're tempted. Ooh, like 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13. But when you are tempted, God will give you a way out so that you can stand up under it. We can say that when we're tempted and trust that God will give us a way out. Another way to stay pure is to distract ourselves from the fair. Perfect. We'll just stay here at Connect HQ and find something better to do. Yes. And last but not least, we must never let Dot find out about the fair. I like that plan. Me too. I'm officially a part of Code Corndog. So, Claire, do you want to hang out with us while we're in lockdown? I would, but I have a book to return to the library. I shouldn't have checked it out in the first place. It was too tempting. Thanks for all your help. And thanks for stopping by and keeping us distracted. Come back anytime. Oh, I will. Now, how should we distract ourselves? Well, as long as it has nothing to do with cotton candy, ponies, or country music. You know... All this talk about corn dogs, maybe Chef Elaine has some corn dogs. Yes! Corn dogs, 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 mustard. Hi, my name is Mike, and we have some tips to help you deal with temptation. We memorized this verse in the book of 1 Corinthians. Say it with me, like this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. But when you are tempted, God will give you a way out so that you can stand up under it. Temptation is not wrong. Everyone gets tempted, even you. And when you are, you can trust that God will give you a way out so that you can say no to sin. Even Jesus, God's only son, was tempted. He knows exactly what it feels like. He set a perfect example for us. He always said no to temptation and never sinned. His knowledge of the Bible helped him when he was tempted. He used biblical truth to say no to sin. Temptation is not something to play around with. Even though it's not a sin, we shouldn't see how close we can get without sinning. If you know something will be tempting for you, a book or a movie or an event, find the ways God gives you to avoid that thing. Have someone hold you accountable, memorize verses, or find a distraction. Get rid of things that tempt you so you can stay pure. Say no to sin. And when you do give in to temptation, don't give up. Ask God for forgiveness and to help you say no the next time. And as always, remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. You know, the next best thing to being at the fair is this corn dog. Mm. It's a good dog. You know, maybe I'll go next year. 
maybe next year I can control myself and see Arrow Harris live in Pert and... Uh, who am I kidding? I can't even control myself saying his name. You know, when you're tempted to do something wrong, Jesus can help you say no to sin every time. Jesus knows what it's like to be tempted to do something wrong. Jesus came down to earth to show us how to live a pure life. If you haven't made that decision to follow him or to learn from him, all you have to remember are your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. If you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk to your Connect Small Group leader before you leave.